Point zero zero is reflected in the vertical line x equals one. When its image is then reflected in the line y equals two, the resulting point is. So here's zero zero, and we are first reflecting that in a line of x equals one. So I'll just write x equals one right there. So this is one, and this line is x equals one. So if I reflect this point into there, it basically will land on the other side. And that other side will be obviously 2, 0. Okay, so that's, that's that first point. And then this point 2, 0, they're saying, is once again reflected, but this time in the line y equals 2. So approximately here. That's approximately y equals 2. So if you reflect this guy in y equals 2, it will end up somewhere here approximately, which would be the same x-coordinate, but the y-coordinate would now be 4. So there you go. That's the answer to the question. So number 12, it's 2, 4, which is choice E. In the diagram, the it shows Lori's house located at 6, 3. If Alex's house is located at minus 2, minus 4, what translation is needed to get from Lori's house to Alex's house. So minus two, minus four, approximately here, let's say, minus two, minus four. So we gotta go from here to here, but not in a diagonal, we gotta go down and, and right, obviously. Well, to go down, that's the y coordinate, we're going from three to minus four, so we've obviously gone down by seven. When you go right, you're going from six here to minus two, so you're going right, uh, sorry, you're going left, 8. So down 7 and then left 8. So which one of those? Uh, choice D. 15, the answer is D. Using the true transformations, the letter R is changed as shown. Using the same two transformations, the letter L is changed as shown. Using the same two transformations, the letter G is changed too. Okay, let's think about this for a second. Let's look at this, what's going on here. All right, what I think is you are basically rotating it uh, almost like if you had a piece of paper and you completely rotated it uh, 180 degrees. And I, I'm pretty sure that the same thing is happening there, right? So I have to first take my G and rotate it all the way around, almost like turn, write it on a piece of paper and then turn it um, upside down. That's the quickest way of doing it. That's how you do this rotation. And if you do, oh boy, how do I write this here? It will be something like this. Okay, well, that's my attempt at a G that's been rotated, basically upside down. Then the next one is pretty straightforward. That's just a reflection, right? It's, it's like a it's like a reflection in a mirror. So that one's pretty straightforward. It's going to be something like this, like that. Okay, that's a horrible G, but you get the idea. Now let's look at the answer choices. And of the answer choices, the one that comes even close to what I drew is D, right? Because the curve obviously has to be this way. And this is not like that. The curve is not this way there and there. So I'm down to just A and D, but the that part of the G is up, and this part of the G is down. I hope that makes sense. So number 15, the answer is D. Translated three units to the right and two units down. What is the y-intercept of the resulting line? So we've got, let's say, this line right here. And we've got the line y equals x. So obviously that's the one that goes right through like that. Then we're taking this and translating three units to the right. So approximately, let's say here. Three units to the right, so that is three. And since we just translated that, it basically goes to the equation y is equal to x minus three. So this time when x is 3, y is 0. And then you're taking this equation and then making another translation two units down. So approximately 
like that. So that equation, since y is going down by 2, it would be y plus 2 is equal to x minus 3. And they're saying, what is the y-intercept of the resulting line? The y-intercept is when x is 0. So that becomes y plus 2 is 0 minus 3. So y is equal to minus 5. And that would be about right there. So number 14, the answer is C. The letter F is reflected in line 1. The image is then reflected in line 2. The shape that results is... All right, so first it's reflected in line one, right? So when it's reflected here in this horizontal line, it will look like this. Exactly like, a, like you know, if line one was a mirror, that kind of thing. Now, this is reflected in line two, this vertical line. Okay, that means it will look like this. Okay, so I mean I didn't draw it a hundred percent like that. I mean I'm not a typewriter, but um, you get the idea. So of the answer choices, which one looks like this? We'll take a look at the answer choices, and you will see that it is choice D for number fifty. In the graph shown, which of the following represents the image of the line segment PQ after a reflection across the x-axis? Here is the x-axis. P looked like it was 3 up, so when you reflect it, it will be P will be 3 down, so it will be where the T is. Q was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 up, so when you reflect it, it will be 6 down, and that's where the U is. So the reflection will basically be TU, and that for number 13 would be B. A translation moves A3, negative 3 to to the right five units and up three units. This translation is done a total of six times. After these translation, the point is at x, y. What is the value of x plus y? All right, so you're taking this and you're translating it. You're going up five, so the x coordinate goes up by five, and then the y coordinate goes up by three. But you're doing the six times, so you have to multiply both of these by six. So you're taking 3, 2, and then translating it 30 and 18. And when you do that, you get to the point uh, 27 and 20. And this is representing x and y. So x plus y would be 27 plus 20, which is 47. So number 17, the answer is D. The triangle shown is reflected in the x-axis, and then the resulting triangle is reflected in the y-axis, which of the following best represents the final position of the triangle. All right. First, let's reflect it in the x-axis. And when you do, it will look something like this. And then reflect that in the y-axis, and when you do, it will look something like that. So now we have to look at the answer choices and see which one looks like this. And I believe the one that matches the best is D for numbers. Triangle T is reflected once. Which of the following triangles cannot be the reflection of triangle T? Well, because it's a reflection, I'm going to draw a reflection line for each of these. So for B, it looks like the line would be right down the middle right? So B looks like it definitely will be a reflection. A, the reflection line, perhaps was the y-axis. It looks like it's equidistant from the y-axis. For C, that one is the one that I don't think is a reflection because the shape is not proper. If it was a reflection, I'm going to draw it here. The shape would be like this, or no. The shape would be Something like that. It wouldn't look like C. So I'm pretty confident that it's C, but let's just look at the other ones. D, the, the uh, reflection would happen there. That would be the plane of reflection. And then for E, it's probably the x-axis. That's the uh, mirror, so to speak, that it's reflecting in. 
So by looking at all the answer choices, it's pretty clear that the one that cannot be a reflection is C for number 17. In the graph shown, which of the following represents the image of the line segment PQ after a reflection across the x-axis? Here's that x-axis, and we're reflecting. So P is 3 units above, so it's going to be 3 units below. Q is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 units above, so it's going to be 6 units below. And the line that joins those two is T to U. So that is the reflection. Therefore, number 18, the answer is B.